It was recently suggested to me that I make another video about what is functional medicine. Functional medicine is not about treating symptoms or treating diseases. It is completely about creating a whole, healthy, functional person. I mean, that's it in a nutshell, but what does that mean? I'm going to take diabetes or insulin resistance as an example. I've talked about it quite a bit lately. I've done several videos on it. Lots of people have asked questions about it. So it makes a very convenient example. If, if you ingest too much sugar over too long a period of time and your body keeps cramming that sugar into the cells, right? It keeps making insulin, cramming it in there. Your cells will get to a point where they say, look, I've had enough. I, I, I can't take any more insulin. So you can make all the insulin you want. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm going to take these little doorways or these little receptors that insulin keeps opening up. I'm just going to board them up and shut them down. So make all the insulin you want, eat all the sugar you want. I'm not listening to it. It can stay in the bloodstream. Now you're insulin resistant. Is that insulin resistance a disease? Or is it just a compensatory mechanism that your body has to protect you against cramming too much sugar into those cells? Conventional medicine says it's a disease. It needs to be treated with drugs. If your body doesn't want that much sugar in the cells and quits listening to insulin, well, by golly, I'm going to take a medication that tells it, oh, no, you don't. You're going to listen to insulin and you're going to take more sugar into those cells. I don't care if it kills me. I'm going to shove that sugar in there because that's what I want to do. In functional medicine, we look at a situation like that and we say, look, if the cell is overwhelmed with sugar and therefore has said, I am not accepting any more. Think of a doctor overwhelmed with patients saying, I'm not going to accept any new patients. Cramming extra patients into that office does not make the medical care any better. So if that cell says, I can't take any more sugar in here, in functional medicine, we say, okay. Let's not put any more sugar in here and let that cell process what it's already got. I'm not treating type 2 diabetes. I'm not treating insulin resistance. I simply saw that as an indicator of what the underlying problem likely is. You have a person who's not eating a diet appropriate for human beings. Change the diet. Right? You read the sign. You understood the problem. And so functional medicine is rarely about treating disease. That's partly why you see so many chiropractors doing functional medicine. We don't really treat disease anyway. Everything we're taught is about create a whole functional, vibrant, healthy body. And it won't have these compensatory diseases, if you will. Now, is it still going to get infected from time to time? Is it still going to, you know, possibly need surgery here and there? Should those things happen? Yes. And that's why we refer patients out for that. But if you don't make enough hormone or you make too much hormone or you can't get rid of a hormone or your cells are becoming resistant to insulin or whatever, in many cases, our body was designed to work appropriately. Something, some situation, too much of something or not enough of something else has put us in a situation where we compensate for something and we don't function the way we're supposed to. In functional medicine, it's about restoring that function. In conventional medicine, it's about a drug that gets rid of a symptom. I'm not saying one is right or wrong. Obviously, I'm biased. I practice more on the functional side of things. But they each have their place. I would say that conventional medicine or prescriptive medicine does a much better job in an acute care setting or an emergency setting. I break my arm, I get in a car accident, I get shot in the leg, I overdose on something. Functional medicine is probably not what I need at that point. I need conventional medicine at that point. Appropriate, appropriately applied conventional medicine, surgery, drugs. But when you're dealing with a chronic situation, autoimmune diseases, 
food allergies, inflammatory problems, um, pain syndromes, ADD, ADHD, uh, things like that. Those are diagnosable diseases that likely have a root cause in dysfunction or malnutrition or inappropriate nutrition. Um, an analogy I use in the office quite often is if I had a dog and I took it to the vet and presented this, this poor animal to the vet and said, look, you know, Fluffy's having trouble lately. She's only five years old, but she's got bald spots on her, on her skin and she's got these open sores and she's limping because her hips are hurting her so badly. And, you know, she's going cross-eyed and she doesn't breathe well. And I mean, all these problems. And so the vet starts asking me questions. And among those is, what are you feeding Fluffy? And so I know the vet's not going to be happy with my answer, but I tell the vet honestly, you know, rabbit chow has been a little bit cheaper at the food store lately. Um, so for the past couple of months, I've just been giving Fluffy rabbit chow because it saves me money. So the vet would probably have some sort of discussion with me around the fact that dogs and rabbits have different nutritional needs. And if I'm just feeding Fluffy the cheapest rabbit chow I can get my hands on, it might not meet all of Fluffy's needs and therefore Fluffy can't physically do the things that she needs to do. She can't make the hormones. She can't run her immune system. She can't grow and develop and her brain doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And she can't control inflammation or fight off infection like she's supposed to because she's not a rabbit and yet she's eating rabbit food. So the reason I, I use that analogy is because humans in many cases are no longer eating a human diet. We are eating a diet that's not consistent with our genetic makeup. And so there are lots of things we can't do. Um, there's a great research study called Pottinger's Cats from years ago, uh, I mean years ago. And, and if you Google it and watch a video of Pottinger's Cats or read the book Pottinger's, P-O-T-T-E-N-G-E-R apostrophe S, Pottinger's Cats, um, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. If we eat a diet that's not consistent with our genetics, we eventually, two or three generations into that, we'll get to a point where we become infertile, inflamed, lethargic, incapable of doing basic things that we used to be able to do. Um, and then we don't live as long. And we're sickly and feeble and dumb. So when you look at what's happened to our human situation over the past century, you could make the argument that's happening. So in functional medicine, it's recognizing who needs to be back on a human specific diet and how do we do that and what parts of their diet are actually not human specific anymore? What's in conflict with their genes and why are they having all these problems? And then rectifying that. We're not treating disease necessarily, but the diseases can point us in a particular direction of where the diet's deficient and, and, and not allowing this person to function the way they're supposed to function. So I hope that's a, a meaningful explanation of functional medicine. Um, but let me know if that didn't make sense to you or if you have specific questions about how does functional medicine approach this or that or why is it important or whatever. Um, but I, I hope that's a good explanation of functional medicine. Feel free to pass it around. Um, if you have someone you've been talking to about functional medicine, you're trying to explain it to them, hopefully this will help out with that. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, hope that served you well, and I'll see you on the next video.